Hey everybody, today I'm going to tell you everything I've learned about getting the old Corsair K95, you know, Vengeance or version 1 working on Windows 10 because it's technically only supported to Windows 8.1. A lot of people reporting issues with um, IQ software are just ultra, ultra confused on how to set it up. So um, let's walk through this from the very top. So this keyboard came out in like, I think 2015 or 2016. It's one of the only versions that has 18 macro keys, it's like one of the only keyboards on the market. And you can tell um, a couple of things, it, kind of about the age of your keyboard, by looking at which logo it has. This is the old Corsair sales logo. And let me just look up um, Corsair K90 Vengeance. And it's important to know the uh, the difference between all these box and so so yeah so Corsair's old branding was called Vengeance they had Vengeance RAM they had all these things I have one of these keyboards it's a great keyboard but these keys the F keys and the macro keys are not mechanical which is like this is an amazing keyboard and it's the dumbest decision they could have ever made with it so um second thing is this keyboard has this switch on the back and this switch is not a a, a profile switch it's a BIOS switch also you can see that this picture has the sales logo but it also has a USB port and it's also got this button. So there's a couple different versions of this keyboard. This is probably one of the later ones. I have one of the ones that only has a BIOS switch and does not have a USB port and I have the sales logo. So I don't know when they switched over to this Corsair gaming branding, but that's a little bit about how to tell the age of your keyboard and all of this. So here's my exchange with um, Corsair support. So um, they say, I just told them I was having problems with IQ, getting it to work and stuff. And we're gonna go through a little bit of IQ as well in this video. And they said, you know, totally reinstall everything. Okay, cool. And then I told them, hey, look, I tried um, IQ, uh, I tried IQ three, I tried IQ four, and I can't get the old stuff to install. So here's all of the files that I could possibly source on the internet with regard to the K95. So these are all the files from Corsair support. They gave me installer 1.0.4. They gave me the 0.7. They gave me the firmware update. The firmware update works, but you can't update the BIOS with the keyboard. This one doesn't install. I'll even try it right now. And this is obviously the later one. So we go next. And it says can't detect a K95. So, and we're going to get into the onboard memory as well. So, but I wanted to prove to you that this does not work. I'm running Windows 10. There you can see it, Windows 10. Um, and so, so the, the software to use ultimately is the Corsair IQ software. And we'll get into how all this works and, and the way I set it up. So I said I'm still having problems. They said it's not supported uh, with Windows 10. It's only supported up to in Windows 8.1. I suggested a workaround. I said you could access an 8.1 computer, run the K95 legacy software if the computer detected it, and then save the profiles to the keyboard itself, which is unfortunate. You know, I don't know if there's different versions with different memory capacities. I know there's limitations with the memory capacity. Um, but on Windows 10, long story short, you can't save it to, you can't save your G keys, you can't really save lighting profiles to the keyboard. You've got to have the software running in the background. So um, they said, here's all the files. And I showed you the files don't work. So um, we'll see if I get a response. I'll, I'll update it in the description if I get a response from them. So that's a little bit about like the, uh, the history of this keyboard, if you will. Now let's talk about the setup because the setup is confusing. So, um, key assignments. This is where you're going to set up all of your stuff. All I use the G keys for is to launch programs. It's just how I use it. You can get as fancy as you want because basically they're hardware profiles, which a lot of people will show you in this software. Oh, click the drop down, click plus, and then you're supposed to create a hardware profile here. Well, you can see I can choose color, choose the picture and choose background, but there's no check mark in this software. And I'm on the latest version as of recording, which is uh, 4.2 or 4.19 and I'm on the K95 and I'll hit check all devices. There's no updates. Okay. This thing's out of support. So I'm on the latest software and, and you can't add the hardware profiles. So what you do is you create the profiles here. So the profiles are tied to the key assignments. So I'm going to press the M2 button, little profile button right here on the keyboard. And when I press that, it's going to switch me over to profile two. And so, yeah, you can have more profiles than this. I don't have really a need for 72 keys as far as I've found so far. I just like having a couple different lighting profiles and kind of universal G keys. Um, but you can see when I press the M1, or the M2, or the M3, it's tied to the profile. 
it's tied to the G keys, okay? So close that up. Now you can see there's these settings here, M1, M2, and M3 hardware lighting. And I can tell you, I, I can't find a use for these anywhere because the, I'm gonna go ahead and make the, the M1 hardware lighting. I'm just gonna delete this, or no, I'm gonna make it green, which is a color I would never use, okay? Just personally. And I'm gonna go to profile one. So right now you can't see, but on the keyboard, I have M1 selected. Well, you can see it right there. Now I'm gonna press M2. And remember we made the M2 hardware lighting. Uh, sorry, we made, let's make the M2 hardware lighting here. Let's make it that green color, okay? And we'll make this one yellow just so we can tell. Sorry, I got that a little mixed up. Okay, so M1 hardware lighting, supposed to be all yellow. M2 hardware lighting, it's supposed to be all green. All, there we go. And for some reason, these are like overlapping each other, which is super weird. That one's blue, this one's green, all, thank you. And then we'll go into this one, static, all yellow. Okay, so M1, come on, show up. M2, M3. So you can see these are just super goofy settings on the M1, M2, M3. Now the thing is, is look right here at M1. I'm on M1, I'm gonna click M2. It didn't switch over to M2, and it didn't switch over to M3. So if I press on the keyboard, or I'm gonna go into lighting effects, and I'm gonna press M2 on the keyboard. If I press M2, it switched over to M2, and it switched over to the lighting effects uh, right here. So any lighting effects and any G keys you're setting up, the workflow is gonna be don't use M1, M2, or M3 hardware lighting. Only use the lighting effects thing. And so um, I have one of my keys on my M1 program to, wow, did the color turn off? The color turned off, this one. And this one were blue, and there's one more that's blue. Anyways, this software is just super goofy. I'm gonna close it out real quick and see if it fixes. So anyways, um, I don't know what it's doing with regard to my lighting not showing or saving on these guys. Need to save. But anyways, you just set it up and everything basically just lives here in the software. And if you wanna save it, Everyone's gonna say, oh, if you see this little memory card thing, then you can save it as a hardware profile. Well, you can see I've got three different hardware profiles and there's nothing, kind of nothing on any of these. And if I hit this, I can't, excuse me, I cannot save it to the keyboard as a hardware profile. And then the other option is, oh, we'll go to device settings and save it as a hardware profile. Well, that should appear right below here, right below the 16.8 million color mode. That should appear right here. It doesn't, I'll check firmware, no new updates, okay? So you can't save to the device uh, K95 Windows 10. Now, let's talk about the last thing, which is device settings, because I don't want this video going too long and it should get you pretty darn well started. So I wanted my, uh, my M1, M2, M3 to match uh, whatever color scheme I was using. So these are the indicator colors. So if you want it off, you set it to black. So zero, zero, zero value, and then it will be off. And that was kind of the way it worked on the original K95. It's a little more confusing if you have changing color schemes and then you apply different color lights, unless you like, you know, kind of a, a green for go or a red for stop, you know. Um, but even then, it doesn't fit with a lot of color schemes and it's confusing. So anyways, to set this up, you're going to hit M1 on the keyboard. So you can see I'm in hardware or I'm in profile one default M1. And if I press M2, you can see all of the I'm in performance and I changed my M colors. And if I hit M3, I'm in profile three and all of the M colors. So everything is tied to performance, lighting effects, or sorry, profile one, lighting effects and key assignments and performance is pretty much all you need to worry about. M1, two, M3, M hard, uh, hardware lighting, uh, have not found a way to save that to device. So that is, uh, that is the overview for how to get this keyboard freaking working on uh, Windows 10 and Sometimes the Q software shows in the tray, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I'll close it out right now, but it seems to work. I'll check uh, Task Manager real quick and we'll just hit I a couple times. There it is, IQ 374, mm, not 
horribly insignificant. Gamers Nexus has a good video on the impact of these things. Um, but yeah, there it is running in the background uh, with IQ. And I did make a post on Linus Tech Tips to see if somebody would um, offer... And, and the video is pretty much over at this point. So you're, you're all set up. So um, now I wanted to show you some interesting stuff. If we go to Alternative 2, Alternative 2 Software IQ. So if you don't want to use IQ, there are programs out there, I've not tested any of these yet, that can communicate with these keyboards, apparently, apparently. Oh, this one, look, this has even got a, like a K95 kind of layout. Open source driver. But it's, it's set for Mac and Linux. So anyways, this might be one to check out. But anyways, this is set for, it doesn't mention anything about the G keys. It mentions about, um, let's see, customizable key bindings. Oh, this might be something to try. I'll make another video about it, perhaps, if I do. Um, so anyways, this one would be a good one to test, probably. But I asked about, you know, could you use basically one of these open, open source kind of softwares to program, uh, or sorry, to program the RGB LEDs and get it safe to hardware? Um, or, and then, and then could you use a separate program to program the G key? So basically one program for G keys, one program for RGB. Uh, so anyways, I think I'm going to download this one, try it out, but, um, yeah, I'll cut here. Thanks so much for watching. Hope this helped and good luck.